There's a section in the Gospel of Matthew 12, 38 through 41 that is named the sign of Jonah. Listen to these words. Then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to Jesus, Teacher, we want to see miraculous sign from you. He answered, A wicked and adulterous generation asked for a miraculous sign, but none will be given except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will stand up at judgment of this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah. But now one is greater than Jonah here. See, in the midst of this craziness of a virus and racial violence, Jesus is pointing to a new world, a world in which he will be the true sign, pointing like Jonah three days and three nights in the belly of a large fish, to a worldwide call to repent. He lists several different issues here. We might add a coronavirus. But in Matthew 24, the sixth verse, the second half says, See to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. If people had paid attention to that, we would have less alarmist teaching about the end times, whether Hal Lindsey's The Late Great Planet Earth or the Left Behind series by Tom LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins or the present new wave. Conspiracy theories were thriving in the first century just as they are today. Jesus pushes them aside and says, stay calm and trust in me. But what about the Old Testament story of Jonah? What was its purpose and why did Jesus refer to it here? See, it was originally told to remind the Jews of their mission to proclaim God's word to the heathen city of Nineveh, the capital of Syria, and to preach against the people's wickedness. But Jonah fled, hoping to escape God's will. So he boarded a ship at Joppa to go to Tarshish. But there was a terrible storm. And Jonah was tossed overboard and calmed the sea, but a great fish swallowed him. He was there for three days and three nights, praying, and his prayer was heard, and he was thrown up on the shore. God again told him to go to Nineveh, and this time he obeyed. He told them that in 40 days they would be destroyed, but they repented, and God saved them. That made Jonah angry, so he sat down and pouted. But God said in Nineveh there was more than 120,000 people. Should I not be concerned about them since they repented? You see, God is concerned about you. The point of the Jonah story is not to be taken literally, but seriously. Now there's one greater than Jonah here. In Matthew 24, 6, he says, Do not be alarmed. Such things will happen, but the end is still to come. In Jesus Christ, we are not alarmed. We know that God through Jesus Christ is concerned about you right here, right now. So stay calm, he says, and trust me. Let us pray. Lord, may we stay calm and ride out this storm called the coronavirus. May we pull on our faith and our trust in you and know that you help those who help themselves. May we help ourselves to a face mask and stay six feet apart. In Jesus' name we pray as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, if you don't remember anything else, please remember this. Stay calm and trust Jesus. And God bless you. Amen.